Welcome to one of the past HSC exam question videos on the regulating substance chapter. What I'll do in a second is I cover this question which comes from the regulating substances chapter. And what I'll do is I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. So this is the question. Part A says define the term enantiostasis with one mark. And part B says Outline methods used by estuarine plants to maintain appropriate internal soil concentrations. And that's worth two marks. And so pause the video, and when you're ready, attempt the question, and then press play when you're done. Welcome back. Now for this kind of question, it's relatively, for the first part, relatively straightforward. All you have to do is well, you need to know what enantiostasis is. Enantiostasis, hard word to write. And then be able to define it as well. So, so for this one, what I wrote is estrogen organisms have the ability to make metabolic and physiological function even if their internal environment is not kept constant. For example, soil concentrations are not maintained at a constant level but fluctuate. Right? So the difference between an antistasis and homeostasis was in homeostasis we always keep our internal environment constant to make sure that our body works properly. Whereas in an antistasis, the internal environment is not kept constant, but the metabolic and physiological function still are still maintained. Remember, metabolic just means how well our enzymes work, and physiological, physiological means body. So our physiological function is how well our body works. So we maintain how well our enzymes and our body works, even if our internal environment is changing, especially when it comes to soil concentration. And so that simple definition gives you one mark for this question. If you included those most important parts, you'd have gotten that mark. And the second part, outline methods used by estuarine plants to maintain pro appropriate internal soil concentrations. So first, it would be good to name some of the name some of the plants and then obviously name what methods so what are the main points of the methods they use so name responses or adaptations adaptations to their actual um, change in salt concentration so name responses adaptations to salt to maintain constant constant salt concentrations. So those two parts, and the ones I've chosen were the mangrove trees, because that's the ones I covered in the video. So, And here I mentioned um, some species, because it says name plants, so that means more than one plant. And if you say that some species of mangrove trees, so you compare mangrove trees, but you mentioned that there's actually different species of mangrove trees, you have actually named different plants. So they're not the same type of mangrove tree. They're different types of species of mangrove trees that do these different adaptations. So we're going to have three different types of mangrove trees and their ability to get rid of salts and maintain appropriate internal soil concentrations. But we've mentioned that there are different types of mangrove trees. Some species of mangrove trees have the ability to accumulate excess salt in parts of their leaves and then drop them when required. Right, so these were the ones that if they absorb too much salt, which they often do, they'll just store it in a, in a leaf, and when it's old, they'll just drop it in no problem at all. Whereas the, the, most, of the, most of the plant won't have a problem in terms of salt. They'll all just accumulate in one certain leaf or a certain part of the plant. And that's one adaptation for one species of mangrove tree. Other species of mangrove trees, these were the other mangrove trees, have special salt glands in their leaves that allow them to allow the plants to remove excess salt. So these are the ones that can just shoot salt out of their actual leaves, make sure that they keep their constant internal environment that way. And a third mechanism was there are even species of mangrove trees, again these are different types of mangrove trees, that block the entry of salt at the roots, which obviously makes sure that we don't have too much salt as well. Right, so here we've mentioned three different ways 
we probably only need to have mentioned two different ways to get two marks, but we just mentioned three different ways. So for two, you would get for two, you would get the full marks. This would be two out of two. If you just describe the adaptation and what it does as well, this. So where do these come from? They come from this dot point. Uh, so the lower one, process and analyze information from secondary sources and use available evidence to discuss processes used by different plants for salt regulation in saline environments. And remember, saline was just salty. This is exactly what B was asking us to do. And A, I don't know why it didn't pop up, but there was this, the um, there was the define antistasis dot point, which just means we have to actually define what an antistasis was, which was exactly what that question was asking us to do. And these words, metabolic and physiological, physiological function, they came from the actual syllabus dot point. So syllabus dot point, which I want to show you but didn't pop up for whatever reason, syllabus dot point had these in it, these two words. It's always good to use the words that come from syllabus dot points because that's kind of what they're wanting you to do, especially when it comes to the fine syllabus dot points. The fine, they want you to use the words in the syllabus. So hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.